Welcome back to another episode of Build and Drive, where today I'm going to show you guys how to do your brakes on your E90. Lord of mercy. Welcome back to the basic maintenance series where I help you guys save some money by teaching you how to fix your own BMW E90s. If this interests you, consider subscribing and checking out my other videos to learn more about how easy it is to maintain these cars by yourself. So today we're going to be checking out our brakes and see if they need to be swapped out or not. At a BMW dealership, replacing your brakes can cost around $400 per axle or $1,700 total for all sides. An independent mechanic should be cheaper, but if you do this on your own, it should only cost around $300 to $400 using OEM stock replacement parts. So comment below what year, make, and model of car you have, where you live in the world, and how much the dealer quoted you for this repair. I'd be interested to know. So first thing we're going to do is go around the car and check the minimum width of the pads and the minimum width of the rotor, and that value is stamped on here. So I can't read it so well, but it says 22.4 millimeters, and so let's grab our calipers, zero them. This one's easier to measure and remember to go past the ridge because if you measure like this you're getting the ridge in in the measurement which we don't want so you see how these these calipers have a little step in them you want to go all the way past the ridge and then get a nice measurement for some reason my calipers are freaking out so i'm just going to zero it there and then we'll go back and it says 24.22 so i think it says 22.4 there so we have we still have a bunch of life left on our front calipers and definitely a lot of life left on our front pads. What I've noticed on the E90 is the thing will go through front rotors a lot faster than the pads, but for some reason the rear pads go faster than the rear rotor. And I don't know why it is the way it is. Uh, maybe there's just better cooling on the front rotors than on the rear rotors so the pads go quicker. I don't know, but that's been my experience. This this brake uh, set has done about, I want to say, 30 or 40,000 kilometers, and it's still really good. These brakes do last a long time. The rear's not as much. Everything looks good from when we did our Bill Stein suspension change. If you want to see any of those videos or any other maintenance videos, you guys can go check out the playlist below. Stamped on the actual rotor itself, it'll say uh, the part number, minimum, thickness, 18.4 millimeter. So 19.52 is what's left on here and it says 18.4, so we got about one millimeter of rotor left and I've looked at the pads. The pads are at like 50%. But what you can do with your with your caliper is use this this part of it. You can kind of put it on here and I can look at it from the top that there's a couple millimeters left. Um, I don't know what the minimum is for this pad. Uh, the reason why you don't want your pads to get too low is because the heat the the surface material it also acts like a heat sink so the thinner the pad the less heating capability sorry the less cooling capability it has uh, to cool the pads under pressure it can overheat your fluid really really easily so you don't want that look at that so we have some scoring on the brakes um, the pedal kind of feels a bit mushy I don't think I'm gonna do any more laps now that I've seen that other side off 19.2 okay that's good we don't really have much pad left so that's not good so I'm gonna order some pads go over the lip 23.7 and lots of life left on that pad I'm not even gonna measure that so this still has one more season to go always check your brakes guys So we know now that these, this pad and, and rotor is good, but I'm going to take it apart and show you how to do that. So here's everything you're going to need. You're going to need some wire brushes, a socket extension, maybe a breaker bar if you have one. You're going to need a 7mm Torx bit, 
hex torx bit and you're gonna need a six millimeter or a six size torx bit uh, you're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket or I just use one of these an 18 millimeter uh, crescent wrench thingy screwdriver some ceramic paste or some copper anti-seize compound if you if you want some brake clean and and rags and some mechanics wire or a bungee cable so when doing pads and rotors you have two options this part of the caliper comes off so that you can get at the pads so normally if you're just doing brake pads but you just unscrew this and there's another one here and then the, the caliper comes off or if you want to get at the rotor you need to take off this bolt right here and there's another bolt the same one an 18 millimeter bolt down here to take off this carrier uh, caliper carrier this piece right here this floats and this is fixed so I'm gonna take this piece off we'll hang it up and then we'll take off the carrier and then that'll get us at the rotor all right so taking off that little cap there looks like this I'm going to insert my 7mm Torx bit. This will hopefully come out with your brakes. This little thing. It's like a, it's like a little slider. We'll get the bottom one out now. Pull this little cap off. I don't know if you can see that. Now, oh, I forgot to remove this. This is the like anti-squeal thing. <laughs> All you do is just use a screwdriver to pull this up and I just pull that out, pull that out. Just like that. Just kinda, I just put my screwdriver in here and twisted it a bit and it came out. And then now I'm gonna get my bungee cord and this caliper. Um, so what's happening is the piston is pushing up against the brake pad. So what I want to do is just put a little bit of pressure, push that uh, caliper piston back in just a little bit, just enough like that to pull this off. See? And so now it'll come off like that. We have our rotor and we have our pads. I'll just take out my, this is the outer pad. See how it doesn't have a, it doesn't have any metal part on the end there. I'll show you what I mean. This part has this little metal piece that sticks in to the caliper itself, to the caliper piston. So now you shouldn't let this hang. So I'm gonna just hang this up. If you let it hang, you can damage your uh, brake line. It'll get, it'll get cracked. So there we go. It's just hanging there. And now we're going to undo this um, carrier and you do that by putting a either socket 18 millimeter socket on these guys to break this I actually broke this free right before so maybe you should do that break and then uh, I just like kicked stood on this ram like that here maybe we can do it down here I didn't actually break this bottom one free yet that if you're lucky enough to do this on a lift you could get a breaker bar on there I'm in my driveway so I'm just gonna use a ratchet and take this off the rest of the way just like that there's one out get your other bolt out and this is the caliper carrier that I'm talking about here. All right, so now that that's out, I already loosened this, but we can remove this little bolt that holds the rotor in place, like that. And if you're lucky like me, that rotor will just come right off. So it's another day. This is round two of trying to get these rotors off. What I've done is uh, put a 10 millimeter bolt through this caliper fastening area here. And uh, what you do is you put a nut on this end, see, and you try to wrench on it, put some pressure on it from behind, and it seems to be working.
great success. A great success. And there you have your wheel bearing. We replaced these wheel bearings long, long, long ago. Seem to be doing all right. You guys can check for any play. Doesn't feel like it. What you want to do is take a wire brush and clean up your hub, which surprisingly, this one is super clean. If you have a small wire brush too, you can kind of get in there a bit easier. And also I put a little bit of uh, brake, ceramic brake paste here, just so that the rotor doesn't rust to the, the wheel hub. I can still see it's still there. Wow, these are super heavy. Everything looks to be in good condition. So next, what you'd wanna do is with your new rotors, brake clean the crap out of them, clean them up totally, even get some new gloves on so that you don't get any dirt and crap on there. Um, I'm not replacing my rotors, of course, because they're fine. We measured and checked that. I just want to show you guys how to do this. And we're going to line up our rotor, our new rotor. For you guys, it'll be new. This middle piece to this middle piece on the hub so that you can screw in your new rotor. So again, wire brush everything. Put a little of ceramic brake paste on the back here so that it doesn't stick. And then mount, brake clean everything. Everything needs to be super duper clean. And then we're gonna mount this. Okay, I'll tighten that in a minute. And we're gonna clean this off. And make sure we don't have any oils or any junk like that on either side of the brake rotor. And then the rest is pretty much the reverse of how we took it apart. So things to look for on the caliper carrier are right here. These four little corners where the caliper touches, sorry, where the brake pads touch the caliper carrier. You want to just wire brush these down and make sure they're nice and clean as well. These ones are okay because you don't want your brake pads to bind as you can see it's shiny they float there uh, on that area and you could even put a tiny bit of uh, I don't think I did this on this but you could maybe put a tiny bit of paste there but that's just preference um, you may need to also put a G clamp on this to push this back into place I don't have one here with me but what I do is take an old, the old brake pad. What I do is take the old brake pad like that and then use one of the G clamps to just squeeze this, slowly twist the thing, squeeze it back into place so that you have room for your other pads, for your new pads, because they're going to be thicker. Okay, so, but because I'm just putting this back together, I'm not going to do that. So here we're going to put our caliper back on here. And it's going to slot in between your hub assembly right here and your rotor and then we put the screw back in so there's a lower one or is it right here Once we push back in our caliper, we can put our brake pad back in. So this brake pad goes in here, like that. The other brake pad goes like that. And then we're gonna put it on top of this rotor. Like so. Now, if you're smart, you can also put some anti um squeal compound there i mean my brakes have always squealed a little bit under low 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 speed so i don't really care could also just be the type of brake pads i'm using but um now we're gonna put the sliders back in and i don't know what you guys think i used to i don't know if in the instructions you're supposed to put a little bit of anti-seize compound on here um, it says, I don't think it says to, but you could add a bit of ceramic paste or 
anti-seize compound to these and then put them back in. I think that's up to you. These do look a little bit corroded, but I'm just gonna put them back in the way that they are because I've looked at the rotor and the rotor is not wearing unevenly. So I think it's okay the way it is. And then we're going to use our seven millimeter bit. You may have to move this around in order to find the thread again, but it seems that this sounds okay. And we'll use our ratchet to tighten this up. And then we're gonna put this back in. I think I normally just shove it in like that. And then I use my screwdriver to pop it over. If I remember correctly. Yeah, and then you push this in. And then just like that. And that is how you guys do your brakes on a BMW E93 series. So if this was helpful for you, consider dropping a like and subscribing and checking out my other videos. I do appreciate all of you guys who have been watching. Hope to see you guys in the next video. See you later.